the next one is that this architecture that we just came up with, one of them was looking at the image at a global scale. We can extend that to have multiple scales. And then we can use the same architecture for three different tasks. One of them is depth estimation, normals, or surface normal estimation, or doing semantic segmentation. All you need to do is change your loss function. The other difference is you're gonna do transfer learning here on ImageNet. This one doesn't have any output, so you're not gonna output any depth, normals, or labels. You're just gonna take the output of the first stage, concatenate it with the input to the second stage or the second scale. But this one is gonna have an output in terms of depth, normals, and labels. You're gonna train that. Once you train it, whatever that's gonna come out, it could be the depth, you're gonna concatenate it with the other image as input your third scale. So it's a tiny modification to the previous architecture. Rather than two scales, you have three scales. The first global one is not outputting any depth, normal, or labels. These two are the scale one and scale two networks you're gonna to train together, and then you're gonna train scale three. In terms of your loss functions, that depends on the problem, which could be depth estimation. You compute the difference this loss function we just saw up until this point of the loss function, it's a scale invariant loss function. We saw it. This other term is to normalize. And how does it normalize? You want the predictions that are coming out of your neural network to end up being smooth. So you're penalizing huge uh, jumps in the gradients in the X direction or Y direction coming out of your depth. It's going to help your predictions to have a smoother local structure. What do I mean visually speaking? So these are the way that your depths are gonna get corrected. I think this is the ground truth. This is what is coming out of the previous method for depth estimation. This is what's gonna come out of adding this term to your loss function and these modifications to your architecture. The impressive thing is that you can actually do normals and it's about predicting the X, Y, Z components of the normals to your surfaces. You look at the dot product of the prediction of your neural network and uh, the ground truth, and you want that to be aligned. And these normals have a norm of one. So all you care are their dot product. And the question is, how do you get the ground truth? How do you compute it? It's not that easy. There are actually methods that try to fit a least squares uh, estimate to the normals in the neighborhood of a set of points. So getting the ground truth is not that trivial. And it's coming out of differentiating your depth estimations. For semantic labels, your loss function changes. And this is your per pixel cross entropy loss, which is gonna come out of a softness. And you're gonna get predictions like this. But the idea is perhaps it is not the best architecture for doing semantic labeling or semantic segmentation, we saw better architectures for doing it, but the big picture is still the same. Look globally, decide locally. Try not to lose the local information. But what is impressive is the same architecture is doing three different tasks. And this is useful when you're doing multimodal predictions. And at the same time, for instance, the depth estimation and surface normals that are coming out of an architecture could be inputs to a semantic labeling task. So you're helping, you're doing some featureizing in that sense. It's not only your images as input, it could be your normals and depth as additional input. I think it's a good time for me to stop and answer any questions that you have. For those of you who want to leave, you can leave, I'm sure. Just have one quick question um, about the, I guess the, the distance from the dot product. I guess that's a cosine distance being used to compare the ground truth and the, the prediction. What, what kind of a reasoning is behind using the cosine distance for this kind of model? Uh, so you have a vector that is pointing in this direction. You have another vector that is pointing in another direction. And then you want to align them together. It means that you want them to lie on top of each other to have an angle of zero. Okay, yeah, that it's, makes sense. It's the same thing here. It's per pixel loss, but then uh, your loss is different for each pixel. For instance, in one of them, you are trying to minimize the mean squared distance between the two, in addition to some 
regularization terms and making sure that the metric that you're working with is a scale invariant. Otherwise, you're in trouble because we don't know what is the underlying scale for depth. We don't know the global scale of this image, but we know that this couch is relatively bigger than this pillow. We know the relative sizes and we can estimate them, but we don't know how big this room is. We don't know the global depth. Yeah, I think that's a good explanation without knowing the, the absolute measurement. We want to understand that the two, the prediction and the ground truth, they goes into the same direction in the high dimension space as close as possible. Yeah, exactly. That, that actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Yep. Yeah.